watching. Dr. Corsi of WorldNetDaily.com, WND.com, joins us, no stranger to this broadcast. One of the most important articles he's ever done, in my view, is on the site. Generals conclude Obama backed Al Qaeda. He's been to Kenya, he's been to Egypt. Everything he's been saying here for years keeps coming out in mainstream news. Washington Times says how Obama arms Al Qaeda. So this is really starting to come out. But what the high level brass and former brass are saying and ambassadors and others are saying is that this appears to be a complete realignment. So to break this down is Dr. Corsi. You've got the floor, sir, for the next 14 minutes before we go to break. Uh, please give us a special report on what's happening. Please give us a briefing. Well, uh, Alex, I've been interviewing a lot of the members of this um, Citizens Commission on Benghazi, which include really top admirals and generals who uh, are very aware, and some of them involved in the situation in Benghazi when uh, the attack was occurring on 9-11 in 2012. Um, what is the case is they've proved that a decision was made by the Obama administration uh, really about 2011, in March 2011, uh, that we were going to switch sides in the war on terror and that we were are going to, we're going to have supported the Al-Qaeda affiliated militia in Libya that we know to be under the political control of the Muslim Brotherhood and that we in fact, and I detail in the article the evidence that supports this, uh, established Christopher Stevens as our first envoy to al-Qaeda and his mission, what he was doing in al-Qaeda was running a fast and furious gun operation, bringing weapons in from Eastern Europe through Qatar and getting them into the al-Qaeda affiliated militia in Libya in order to overthrow Gaddafi. I mean, that's remarkable. We were funding, providing weapons to established Benghazi as our special diplomatic compound operating posts right next to the CIA annex from which Ambassador Chris Stevens, before he was ambassador, he came in on a cargo ship, this is 2011, was running guns unbeknownst to the American people into our new allies, which are the Al Qaeda militia in Libya. That was the Obama administration decision and the policy follows from there. It's fundamental that listeners understand that Obama changed sides in the war on terror and decided that we would ally with Al Qaeda to bring down Gaddafi in Libya. I mean, it's shocking, to be absolutely honest with you, it's shocking. Now, you could talk for 10 hours on this, but condensing it down, you had this intel years ago. I confirmed it with Colonel Schaefer and others on the inside that have been in Congress in these briefings that are classified, that your analysis is dead on. They know that 95% of the fighters in Syria are Al-Qaeda, so they had them change the name to ISIS to confuse the public. From your intel, is this really a, another bait and switch now where they claim that the U.S. and NATO and Turkey are allied with Iran against Saudi Arabia and Al-Qaeda, or is it another double cross where they're really still arming Al-Qaeda as the Iraqi government is saying they've caught them doing? Because every indicator I see is they're attempting to look like they're doing both, but that they're not really engaged in real strikes against Al-Qaeda, and that this is a triple cross. Well, in the series of stories that I'm writing, uh, I've interviewed former CIA operatives who make it clear that we're playing both sides. We're playing both encouraging Iran to enter as our supposed allies to defeat ISIS, while at the same time, what Christopher Stevens was doing at the time of his death was diverting weapons from Libya through Turkey to Al-Qaeda groups uh, fighting Assad. Many of those Al-Qaeda groups became ISIS. I mean, it's fundamental to understand that we, in a sense, created ISIS and provided the weaponry and the funding through Libya uh, in order to uh, keep ISIS going, to have them grow. And now we're encouraging Iran to come into the conflict to defeat ISIS. I mean, it's the CIA playing both sides against the middle. But in this, Obama has gone completely onto the other side. He's now supporting Al Qaeda. He's supporting the Muslim Brotherhood. He's supporting uh, the Shiites in Iran. 
even though they're developing nuclear weapons that they could potentially use against Israel. Okay, so to be clear, all, all what you're getting at is with our enemies. I, I understand. So, so it's not he's either on the side of the Wahhabist or he's on the side of the Shiites. Are you saying that beneath the surface, this is really allying with the Muslims? Period, whether they be Shiite or Sunni. And that this is a master plan to turn Africa, the Middle East, and much of Central Asia uh, over to them. Into a radical Islamic hotbed. That's correct. I agree with that. That's what I'm saying. So they don't care now. It's fun to everybody who's radical. We're not. We're no longer fighting radical Islamic terrorism. We're funding it and arming it. And, and is that why starting in 2011... Big Sis came out and said, Our, we are no longer worried about Islamic terror. We're only focused on Tea Party and gun owners. Right, because they've, uh, the White House has abandoned the idea that there is Islamic terror, except maybe for some hotheads that do a, you know, a deed that becomes a little bit too obnoxious. So Obama wants to be able to distance himself from the particular ones he doesn't like. But we're still supporting radical Islamic terrorism, and the administration will not say our enemy is radical Islamic extremism. Well, I had Ahmad Salam on, who's a big FBI informant, former colonel, Right. In the Egyptian military, very respected. Even the New York Times says his credentials are impeccable. Yeah. He said your analysis is dead on and yeah. that from his sources in intelligence, they're totally freaked out in Egypt that our government is trying to overthrow Egypt and destabilize the whole Middle East. Uh, and he said exactly what you just said. Right. Uh, you quote, you quote high-level officers in your article yes. concurring. This is really scary. Then you add that with the war on brass that aren't traitors. What's the master end game out of this, A, and B? How is it going for them, then, in this, in this turn the world over to radical Muslims operation? Well, I'm only partway through the series of articles, but what I'm going to develop and have been developing is that Obama has completely switched. We are now embracing radical Islamic terrorism. We're destabilizing all of North Africa. We're destabilizing Iraq. Uh, we're allowing Iran to come into influence in Iraq. Uh, this is extending over to Hezbollah. I mean, soon I think you're going to find a regional war involving Hezbollah, even potentially Hezbollah joining with Iran against Israel. This could all you now see out. France and others lining up against Israel, and even if people oh, don't, yes, they, don't they will not, France will not support Israel. France will be on the side of the radical Islamic uh, terrorists too. I mean, they're appeasing right now. France is the radical Islamists, and Obama is at the center of this duplicity. Because he's not come out and told the American people that we've uh, oh, Al Qaeda is no longer our enemy. We're sided with Al Qaeda. We've funded Al Qaeda. We've armed Al Qaeda. This is what Chris Stevens was doing. This was the whole plan. We we supported the Muslim Brotherhood. El Sisi in Egypt right now. As soon as he came into power, Obama quit funding him. Obama, you know, El Sisi has called out Obama and said Obama has supported. The Muslim Brotherhood, which is a going back to World War II, and the Nazis. Muslim Brotherhood, not signed with Hitler. They've been a radical Islamic destabilizing force determined to destroy Israel and then to destroy the United States. And our White House, our you know, his our CIA, our State Department under Hillary Clinton, have all embraced supporting al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood. Well, by the way, Dr. Corsi, I would hear you say this, and you weren't going this far six years ago because it hadn't happened yet, but you were right. warning of this, and I would debate you and say, come on, they want to get radical Islam out of control as an excuse to have no-bid contracts and keep some wars going. But no, you were right. This is a plan to turn it loose and to take over much of the world, and anybody that stands in the way of it is attacked. But, I mean, I criticize some of the elements in Israel. I'm not an Israel firster. I'm an American. I, I don't like some of the lobbying Israel does here in the U.S. I don't like any country doing that. I don't like China doing that, telling Hollywood what to do. But that said, think about really putting radical Muslims in charge to overthrow every moderate government, and Assad's moderate compared to them, or Egypt's moderate compared. What is the point? It's so evil to be backing these people and so bold, and then you pull back, Israel has been supporting in the Golan Heights some of the Syrian army, uh, the Free Syrian Army as well. So even Israel, to a certain extent, has been going along with this. I mean, how do you square that? I mean, this is bizarre. Well, you, you, first of all, you can't make deals with radical Islam and have it turn out the way you want it to turn out. They have their own agenda, and their own agenda is 
basically a totalitarian political object, objective to crush everyone, all of the religions, and take over the world for radical Islam and Sharia law. Uh, and you, what we're going to find, what you're going to see, my article tomorrow, I've just completed it today, is going to be that we rejected the Obama White House and the Hillary Clinton State Department. Um, you had in, in Libya, Gaddafi was ready to abdicate. And the negotiations were going on for him to ask. That's right. And the Obama White House said no. And within days, Obama signed an order authorizing the CIA to support and fund and arm the Al Qaeda affiliated militia in Libya, knowing that they were Muslim Brotherhood controlled politically. And you're getting this from high level military sources. Absolutely. If you go back to the time, He'd invested billions in France. The word was he was planning to move to France. A really smart move. He let Western governments in. Their answer was double-crossing, put Al-Qaeda in, and now they admit Libya is a totally failed state and is now a jihad center to invade all of Africa. And I've been in touch for years with the, you know, the tribal leaders who have left Libya and are trying to get the country back. They're working out of Egypt. I've been reporting on them. The uh, Libya has been totally destabilized. It's been controlled right now by warring uh, militias that are Al-Qaeda dominated. Muslim Brotherhood is in there. The tribes are trying to win back their freedom. They're trying to get their country back. Let's be clear, the indigenous people are working with Egyptian intelligence yes. to try to kick Al-Qaeda out and Precisely. our government supporting them. I mean, that yeah. is so what? evil. <laughs> so what we're doing, we're supporting the bad guy. We're supporting Al-Qaeda. We are supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, we are arming the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda. We're destabilizing all of the Middle East. We're, we're overthrowing stable, maybe evil, but stable leaders like Mubarak uh, in Egypt in favor of Morsi, mother of Muslim Brotherhood, in favor of you know deposing Gaddafi and putting in force these Muslim radical jihadist militia that are Al-Qaeda dominated operating in Libya under the Al-Qaeda flag. We are Al-Qaeda in the White House and the State Department. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama are Al-Qaeda in Libya. How is it going for them? How is Obama doing? What do you expect them to pull next? Well, I think it's a disaster. I mean, the whole thing is just a complete chaos. It's just, it's degenerating into a, a massive chaos. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, the next things I'm going to be reporting, which I think you're going to find you know, also, I'm also documenting the Muslim Brotherhood and dominance and movement into the U.S. government. I mean, at policy levels in the White House, this is not a small movement. And it's been going on since Obama was elected. Obama, as I pointed out when I wrote The Obama Nation back in 2008, when Obama first came on the scene, he was affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood and the radical jihadists in Chicago. This is a revolution. Open the borders, flood us. Uh, I mean, this is the communist roots. I just can't believe that the establishment is backing this. This is extremely dangerous. If I was a top billionaire, I mean, I wouldn't want to do this. This would endanger my wealth, my children. I mean, this is this is this is the elite are in control of the West, and they're breaking it because they hate the Renaissance values. Their totalitarian instincts are insane, Dr. Corsi. Yeah, they would like the 14th century returned, and the you know the information I'm getting now increasingly is the group of. Um, generals, the admirals, the intelligence people, the former special forces people who are trying to bring to the American people the duplicity, if not outright treason of the White House and Hillary Clinton in not explaining to the American people that we switched sides in the war on terror and joined the bad guys. We became Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is us. I get chills. Dr. Corsi, your report, we list all the generals and top people and, and members of Congress saying this. The good news is this is coming out. It's just so hard to believe people have trouble, but it's there. And uh, we'll we'll talk to you again, hopefully next week, to get us an update when you finish this, this group of reports. Amazing journalism. You deserve the Pulitzer Prize. Thank you so much, Dr. Corsi. A great pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much, Alex. WND.com or Infowars.com.